The Pacific Northwest is one of the most stunning regions in the United States, known for its rugged coastlines, dense forests, vibrant cities, and breathtaking mountain peaks and volcanoes. This area is not only a hub of natural beauty, but also a cradle of innovation and culture, giving rise to iconic American staples like Microsoft and Starbucks. Revered for its picturesque landscapes, the Pacific Northwest boasts numerous national parks and scenic areas, offering a haven for outdoor enthusiasts. Home to over 13 million people, the region is experiencing rapid growth. But beneath this dynamic and bustling exterior lies a silent yet formidable threat, the Cascadia Subduction Zone. The Cascadia Subduction Zone is a fault line stretching over 600 miles, from Cape Mendocino in Northern California, through Oregon and Washington, to the northern tip of Vancouver Island in British Columbia. Here, the Juan de Fuca Plate is subducting beneath the North American Plate, a geologic interaction responsible for shaping the iconic landforms of the region. From Mount Rainier and Mount Hood to the Puget Sound and the Olympic Peninsula, these landforms, especially the volcanoes of the Cascade Range, offer vital clues about the area's geologic past and its potential future. To understand the powerful forces at work, we begin our journey at Hat Creek Rim Scenic Overlook in Northern California. Standing prominently in the distance is Mount Shasta, a majestic and active volcano at the southern edge of the Cascadia subduction zone. At 14,179 feet above sea level, Mount Shasta is the second highest peak in the Cascade Range and the most massive, with an astounding volume of 85 cubic miles, 350 cubic kilometers. Its beauty and scale are matched by its cultural significance, being sacred to Native American tribes like the Modoc. According to Modoc legend, the chief of the sky spirits created Mount Shasta by piling ice and snow from the heavens, forming a mountain of immense power and majesty. Geologists, however, tell a different story. Mount Shasta, like all the volcanoes in the Cascade Range, owes its existence to the processes of the Cascadia subduction zone. These processes have shaped the geology of the Pacific Northwest, creating a chain of volcanoes that not only highlight the dynamic history of the region, but also help us understand its future. But how exactly do subduction zones create volcanoes? And why is this knowledge crucial for learning from the past, understanding the present, and preparing for the future? One of the key players in this process is something we encounter daily, water. Water, often seen as the essence of life, plays a vital role in the Earth's geologic activity. It drives plate tectonics, the fundamental mechanism shaping our planet, and is indispensable for the formation of volcanic systems like the Cascades. In the same way, life on Earth depends on water, so too does the dynamic geology of our planet. Understanding the role of water in these processes helps unravel the mysteries of Earth's geological history and equips us to better navigate the challenges posed by natural hazards in the Pacific Northwest and beyond. Geological processes on Earth, much like biological life, cannot exist without water. But how exactly does water drive plate tectonics? and what is its specific role in forming the Cascade Volcanoes. To understand this, we must delve into the regional geological dynamics at play in the Pacific Northwest. As you've learned so far, the Cascadia Subduction Zone is a major fault line off the Pacific Northwest coast. At this boundary, two tectonic plates collide, the North American Plate and the Juan de Fuca Plate. The Juan de Fuca Plate, being composed of denser mafic, iron-rich rock, is subducted beneath the lighter, felsic, silicon-rich rock of the North American Plate. This process, known as subduction, drags large amounts of water from the Pacific Ocean down into the Earth along with the descending plate. Once within the subduction zone, this water interacts with the minerals in the subducting plate, such as forsterite, a magnesium-rich mineral. The water chemically alters these minerals through a process called serpentinization, transforming them into hydrous minerals like serpentine. Additionally, the presence of water lowers the melting point of the surrounding rock, allowing solid rock near the plate boundary to melt into magma. This water-rich magma undergoes metasomatism, where its chemical composition is altered. As the mafic, basaltic magma from the Juan de Fuca plate incorporates water, minerals like olivine and pyroxene crystallize and separate out of the melt in a process known as fractional crystallization. These iron-rich minerals solidify first due to their higher melting points, around 1,200 degrees Celsius, leaving behind magma enriched in lighter, silicon-rich minerals such as quartz and feldspar, such as 
This process transforms the magma from basaltic, mafic, to more silica-rich compositions like andesitic, intermediate, or rhyolitic, felsic, producing what is known as evolved magma. The evolved magma, now less dense than the surrounding crust, rises toward the surface. During this ascent, it may further evolve through assimilation, partial melting of the felsic continental crust it encounters along the way. This results in magma that is even more enriched in silica. When this evolved magma reaches the surface, it erupts, forming the characteristic volcanoes of the Cascadia subduction zone. These geological processes, driven in large part by water, are fundamental to the formation of the Cascade Range and highlight the intricate connections between Earth's water cycle and its tectonic activity. Through this lens, we gain a deeper understanding of how water not only sustains life, but also shapes the dynamic geology of our planet. In the case of the Cascadia subduction zone, this geological process has been ongoing for the last 37 million years. However, the iconic volcanoes of the Cascade Range, such as Mount St. Helens, Mount Hood, and Mount Rainier, are far younger, having formed within the last 2 million years. The Cascade Range is home to roughly 3,000 volcanoes, 231 of which have erupted within the last 10,000 years. It's important to note that not every volcano in the Cascades is composed of silica-rich, evolved magma. Much of the magma produced in subduction zones remains mafic, and stratovolcanoes like Mount Hood and Mount Rainier are primarily composed of intermediate andesitic magma. Regardless of the magma's eventual composition, the incorporation of water into the subduction process is key to melting subterranean rock and forming magma. Whether the magma evolves into rhyolite or remains basaltic, water is the essential ingredient that drives the creation of volcanic arcs like the Cascades. This intimate relationship between water and Earth's processes is both profound and poetic, tying together the realms of biology and geology. Now that we understand how the Cascadia subduction zone and its volcanoes were formed, Let's examine evidence of their raw power and destructive potential, starting with Crater Lake. Crater Lake, a stunning national park in southern Oregon, is as peaceful today as its past was violent. While it may appear serene, this deep blue lake lies within a caldera, a massive volcanic crater. At 1,949 feet deep, it is the deepest lake in the United States and the seventh deepest in the world. But how did this remarkable feature come to be? Roughly 8,000 years ago, Crater Lake did not exist. Instead, this area was dominated by Mount Mazama, a towering stratovolcano standing about 12,000 feet above sea level. For 400,000 years, Mount Mazama had cycled through periods of building itself up with eruptions and violently tearing itself apart. The cataclysmic event that created Crater Lake occurred about 7,700 years ago when Mount Mazama erupted with unimaginable force. The eruption ejected vast quantities of magma and ash, blowing 3,000 feet off the mountain's summit and causing the volcano to collapse inward, forming the caldera we see today. Since then, repeated episodes of rain and snow have filled the caldera with nearly 2,000 feet of water, as the Cascade Range is one of the wettest regions in the United States. Crater Lake has no natural inflows or outflows, meaning all the water originates from precipitation. Interestingly, Crater Lake's isolated environment explains why no native fish are found here. There are no rivers to bring them in. The lake, however, is not entirely dormant. Beneath its surface, a vast reservoir of magma still exists, and hydrothermal activity persists at its depths. While Mount Mazama is currently considered dormant, it ranks as the 17th most dangerous volcano in the United States. If a major eruption were to occur tomorrow, the consequences, particularly from the massive volumes of ash, would be significant. That said, Mount Mazama's remote location means it would likely cause fewer immediate casualties compared to other Cascade volcanoes. The same cannot be said for Mount Hood and Mount Rainier, which are situated alarmingly close to major urban centers like Portland and Seattle. These volcanoes pose serious risks, not only to local populations but also to the broader infrastructure and economy of the Pacific Northwest. Let's head to Mount Hood to explore the potential future of Cascade eruptions and the implications such events could have for society and life in this region. Mount Hood? More like Mount Good looking. Whoop whoop. Standing here on the slopes of the majestic Mount Hood, it's impossible not to be awestruck. 
towering at 11,239 feet above sea level, Mount Hood is the highest mountain in Oregon and, as you've probably guessed by now, an active volcano. Mount Hood poses a significant threat to nearby communities, including the 37,000 residents of Hood River, Sandy, and Troutdale. The last confirmed eruption occurred in 1781, just 243 years ago, during an event known as the Old Maid Eruptions. During this time, a lava dome near the summit, known as Crater Rock, collapsed as the volcano erupted. This caused the rapid melting of glacial ice and snow, creating a destructive slurry of hot, concrete-like material, called a lahar, that raced down the mountain and into nearby valleys. Lahars are powerful and unforgiving, as evidenced by the path of destruction left by Mount Hood's 1781 eruption. Even now, nearly 250 years later, trees still refuse to grow in the Lahar's wake. Today, the communities of Sandy, Troutdale, and Hood River face the same risk. In the event of another eruption, Lahars would devastate roads, buildings, vehicles, and anything else in their path, including human lives. While modern warning systems would likely save many lives, the damage to infrastructure and property could total billions of dollars, and it could take years to rebuild. If you've done your own research, you might be puzzled about Mount Hood's last eruption. Some sources claim it occurred in 1866, based on reports from early settlers who witnessed fire, smoke, and steaming activity on the mountain. However, there is no geologic evidence to confirm this, making 1781 the last eruption supported by science. As dangerous as Mount Hood is, it pales in comparison to the looming threat of Mount Rainier. Standing as one of the most hazardous volcanoes in the United States, Mount Rainier's colossal size, vast glacial ice reserves, and proximity to the Seattle-Tacoma metropolitan area make it a recipe for disaster. The U.S. Geological Survey USGS, estimates that a significant eruption of Mount Rainier could put the lives of 795,000 people at risk from Lahars alone. These devastating mud flows could travel over 50 miles, as they have in the past, reaching areas like Renton and beyond. This immense potential danger places Mount Rainier on the list of Decade Volcanoes, a group of 16 of the world's most dangerous volcanoes identified by the International Association of Volcanology and Chemistry of the Earth's Interior. The very idea that a single volcano could threaten nearly 800,000 lives is nothing short of alarming. Mount Rainier's immense glacial reserves, combined with its explosive potential, make it a ticking time bomb for the Pacific Northwest. Let's dive deeper into what makes Mount Rainier such a formidable force of nature. The Cascade Range is home to over a dozen volcanoes beyond Mount Rainier, posing risks to the lives of over 7 million people across numerous communities. From south to north, these volcanoes include Lassen Peak, Mount Shasta, Medicine Lake Volcano, Mount Mazama, Crater Lake, Newberry Volcano, The Sisters, Mount Jefferson, Mount Hood, Mount St. Helens, Mount Adams, Mount Rainier, Glacier Peak, Mount Baker, and Mount Garibaldi. Among these, the five most likely to erupt in the near future are Mount St. Helens, Mount Hood, Mount Baker, Glacier Peak, and Mount Rainier. However, all these volcanoes have shown signs of activity in the recent past, and any one of them could erupt at any time. While this may sound alarming, it's important to understand that predicting the exact timing of volcanic eruptions remains beyond our current scientific capabilities. Volcanologists can analyze past eruptions, identify patterns, and estimate the likelihood of future eruptions within a general time frame, but pinpointing the precise moment when a volcano will erupt is not yet possible. As such, any of these cascade volcanoes could theoretically erupt tomorrow. Although this uncertainty might be unsettling, there is good news. You can take steps to increase your chances of survival in the event of an eruption. To explore this topic further, let's head to Powell Butte in Portland, a location that offers stunning views of one of the Cascades' most infamous volcanoes, Mount St. Helens. Helens. Mount St. Helens, the most active volcano in the Cascades, is famous for its catastrophic 1980 eruption. However, it's worth noting that Mount St. Helens last erupted in 2008 during a phase of rebuilding itself. As the most likely Cascade volcano to erupt again, it's almost certain that Mount St. Helens. Helens will erupt within the next 50 years. For those living in the Pacific Northwest, understanding how to survive a volcanic eruption is crucial. 
Fortunately, Cascade volcanoes are some of the most heavily monitored in the world, and unlike earthquakes, volcanoes usually provide warning signs before they erupt. These warning signs include increased volcanic gas emissions, swarms of small earthquakes caused by magma moving underground, and visible bulging or deformation of the volcano's surface as magma rises from its subterranean chamber. Thanks to advanced monitoring systems, geologists can detect these changes in real time and quickly notify the public of impending danger. Living in volcano country might sound intimidating, but with proper awareness and preparation, you can significantly improve your ability to respond to an eruption. So, are the Northwest's volcanoes ticking time bombs? Perhaps, but they are also a testament to the power and resilience of our planet. Understanding their behavior and being prepared are the keys to coexisting with these geological giants. If you enjoyed this video and want to dive deeper into Earth's incredible geology and mysteries, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you won't miss our next exploration. Until next time, stay curious and stay safe.